One, two. All right. <clears throat> All right, guys. So we're going to begin, inshallah, ta'ala, brothers and sisters. So, bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tamassaka bi sunnatihi ila yomiddin amma ba'd fa inna astaqa al-hadithi kalamullah wa khayru al-hadi hadiyu muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharra al-umuri muhdathatuha wa kulla muhdathatin bid'ah I commence in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. I send salutations of prayers and peace upon the finality of prophets and messengers. Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family, his companions and all who follow him in righteousness until the day of judgment. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu ta all of my brothers and sisters who are here in the Zoom room with us and who are also live with us on TikTok. Today, inshallah ta'ala, we are continuing on with this beautiful journey of learning the names of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and His attributes. And today, um, we are taking three names and these names also connect to the name that we took last week, inshallah. If... Uh, who wants to tell me what was the name we took last week, inshallah ta'ala, for those who are present in the class here on Zoom. You can type it into the chat, inshallah ta'ala. Let's see who remembers. Ah, naam. Good job. Good job, mashallah. At-Tawwab. Naam. Good job, guys. Mashallah. So, alhamdulillah, this week, the names are going to connect. So, there's going to be some overlap naturally, Right? And Alhamdulillah again, فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ ذِكْرَ تَنْفَعُ Meaning, remind because the reminder benefits the believers, right? It helps to strengthen what we believe and it helps to strengthen our practice of this belief system, inshaAllah ta'ala. So the names that we're taking today, inshaAllah ta'ala, that come up in the Qur'an, غَافِرُ الذَّنْبِ الغفور الغفار Right, so these three are... Uh, names that come up, inshallah ta'ala, or they're used this way in the Qur'an, inshallah ta'ala. And she goes on to tell us how many times they're used in the Qur'an um, eventually. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as uh, she brings in the book in 1549, He says, Tell my servants that I am the forgiving, the merciful. Inform my servants of these two very important characteristics that are a part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That He is the forgiving and that He is the merciful. And this is something that we must keep in mind every single day, beloved brothers and sisters, no matter how difficult things are in life. SubhanAllah. I got a difficult call today from someone, mashallah, uh, from a Muslim, alhamdulillah, and they... When they called me, they said, I'm in a bad place, right? SubhanAllah. Right now, I'm in a bad place mentally, spiritually, SubhanAllah. And I had to remind this individual that Allah is forgiving, that Allah is merciful, that Allah is loving, right? Because we tend to get to these places where we forget these things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala wants goodness for us. Even though we're going through some type of difficulty, it doesn't mean that this is what Allah wants for us in our lives. But He wants goodness for us, and these are means that allow us to come back to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she mentioned of the things that create a mental barrier between us and Allah is our sins, our mistakes, our missteps. She says many of us have felt disheartened because we have messed up. Perhaps we messed up way too many times to count. And we've been talking about this, right? And maybe we messed up in the worst of ways. And this brings us feelings of shame and unworthiness that we talked about last week. But we must know that we are worthy, mashallah, tabarak wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, we are worthy of Allah's forgiveness. We are from those whom Allah, mashallah, tabarak wa ta'ala, will forgive if we turn to Him sincerely. So she starts to talk about 
these names, inshallah ta'ala, she starts to talk about the, the issue of forgiveness, maghfira. And there is a dua that we usually say or we're taught by the Prophet sallallahu to say, Rabbi ghafir li. And we usually say this in our salah. When we sit back and we're in jalsa sitting, in between the two sajdas, we say, Rabbi ghafir li wa li walidayya. Oh Allah, forgive me and my parents. Right? SubhanAllah. So Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala on the tongue of His Prophet sallallahu is teaching us to use this supplication, my Lord, forgive me. And she mentions that what we are actually asking from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala in this moment is for Allah to cover up our sins and protect us from it. So in the class today, we're going to see different forms of how sins are dealt with and how subhanAllah to have them forgiven and what does these, these, Ar these Arabic terms mean in English because we keep hearing the same word forgiveness, 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 forgiveness in English but in Arabic they each have a special meaning, right? So, and, and this is kind of where things get lost in translation, right? Because you hear forgiveness, you hear the forgiver, the pardoner and it all just sounds the same, right? SubhanAllah but there are nuances to, mashallah, these names and how to understand them. So, she tells us that when we use this Rabbi Ghafirli, when we say, my Lord, forgive me, right? We are asking Allah to do what? To cover up our sins and to protect us from them. So here we are realizing Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala is not wiping the sin away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not removing the sin out of our life or out of our books. The sin remains but the sin is covered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Covered how? Perhaps Allah has covered it in this world so that it doesn't be seen or it can't be seen by anyone except Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that it is not known to anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is one of the ways that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala covers the sin and we're going to see how Allah will remind us of those things that He has covered for us. Allah tells us in the Quran, 4, 4, 4, chapter 4, verse 48, Allah does not forgive. So here we have something very important. When we begin to read the Quran, right? Allah does not forgive. Our ears, our antennas should go up. What is it that Allah is not forgiving? Okay, because Allah said He forgives. So now what is this clause that Allah is putting here that He says He will not forgive? Allah does not forgive joining of partners alongside with Him. Shirk. So if anyone makes shirk, they associate with Allah a deity, a God, something that is not worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah does not forgive the person who does that action. Until they do what? Until they make tawbah. They turn to a tawab, right? The name we took last week. And they make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they repent from that sin that they, they've committed, which is a major sin. And thereafter, they're making tawbah and them walking away and regretting and hating the sin and all of those things we talked about last week. Then, mashallah, they fall back into the category where they can have, mashallah, their sins forgiven. As Allah says in the in following up in this verse, but He forgives anything less than that to whomever he wills. So shirk is the pinnacle, right? This is the height. This is what Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala doesn't forgive, but anything that's below shirk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive. He forgives murder, he forgives interest, he forgives crime, he forgives infidelity, he forgives, you know, intaking of drugs, he forgives all of these things. Does it mean that I should take my chance? Absolutely not, right? Because and then we're playing with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we'll say, ah, oh, Allah is the forgiver. So you know what? I'm going to hit the club tonight. And after I finish in the club, mashallah, I'm going to ask Allah to forgive me. Allah is the forgiver. I'm going to go smoke me a blunt tonight, get an L. But who says that you're going to be able to make tawbah afterwards? No one. I'm going to fornicate. No one says that you're not going to die in the moment, die before being able to make tawbah. Why? Because your, your intention is corrupt, right? 
So we want to make sure that we don't play with the deen either. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah, He forgives any sin that is less than that to whomever He wills. And she mentioned that his or her, when she, she begins to talk about how we as human beings, when people come around us and they are accepting of our mistakes and they help us to get past them and help us to work through them, that indeed our love and appreciation of these people makes us want to be better and want to be even closer to them. So whenever we have done something to somebody and we've come and we've apologized sincerely and that person says, you know what, it's okay and you hug one another, mashallah, you embrace each other, you have let it go, mashallah, that fortifies that relationship, it strengthens the relationship and it, want, it makes you want to be closer to that person, subhanallah. He says, she said, his or her acceptance of us makes us unafraid to look hard at ourselves. Why? Because that person is not being super judgmental with me. That person is not pushing me aside because of my shortcomings. They're embracing me, helping me to change. And he says, she says, indeed, a relationship like this is one of hope, one of constant growth. It is not censored and it is not, it does not include dejection or rejection, right? So these four things. And then when we look at it, subhanAllah, as she says, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is far above any analogy, right? SubhanAllah. But if this is the case with human beings, then more so with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That shouldn't we love him even more because subhanAllah, he's accepting us where we are right now in this moment. He accepts us with our shortcomings, our deficiencies, with our errors, with our sins, with all of those things that we do constantly, with the disobedience that we do against him, subhanAllah. How many of us are parents? And when our kids disobey us, we lose our minds, right? We go back crazy, subhanAllah. Like, didn't I tell you? I expect that to be done right now, right? We lose it, right? SubhanAllah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He doesn't lose it with us. Allah Akbar. Right? He reminds us, I'm here for you, Alibadi. I'm here for you, my slave. All you have to do is turn to me, inshaAllah ta'ala, and I'm here to embrace you. And Allah, she mentions, empowers us with the knowledge that He forgives. And this tells us that we have a loving, accepting Lord. And it's a testament to our ability to become better. Right? Allah is telling us, you can be better. Alhamdulillah. So she says, Allah gave Himself three different names from the same root. All right? To drive home this point. And He invites us to call on Him by these names. And so that we can be forgiven, transformed, and become better. She said these names are meant to both humble and empower us. Allah tells us that He is the forgiver of, of sin, ghafiru dhamb, okay, ghafiru dhamb, and the acceptor of repentance, right? He is severe in punishment, He is infinite in bounty, and there is no God but Him, and to Him is the ultimate reward. And Allah uses this word. This, this phrase, غَافِرُ الدَّمْ, this name, in chapter 40, verse 3. Allah also says, furthermore, that if any of you has foolishly done a bad deed and afterward repented and mended his ways, and mended his ways, Allah is most forgiving. He is غَفُور and most merciful. All right? SubhanAllah. And then in Surah Al-Nuh, the Prophet Noah called his people after they had committed grave injustices, saying to them, ask forgiveness from your Lord. He is ever forgiving, ghaffaran. Allah is ghaffaran, right? So you have the three usages of this name, mashallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, these names, where Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is telling us that He is the forgiver and the acceptor of sin and repentance, right? And in the same token, He's telling you, I'm also severe in punishment. Meaning, if you don't turn away, if you don't stop, this is the outcome of that as well. Why? So that on the day of judgment, we can't ignorantly say, well, I didn't know, right? I didn't know this was going to be my outcome. Yes, you were told, right? SubhanAllah, just like in this life, you know that if you go down the road and you're driving 80 and a 50, you're going to get stopped by the cop. You're going to get a ticket. Maybe you lose your license for, for a bit, right? 
There are consequences to those things. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He lays out the consequences, but He's telling you, I'm the forgiver. So don't take the consequences, right? Take the proper route, inshallah ta'ala. And he's, again, he reminds us that if we've done anything foolishly, right, in terms of bad deeds, and then repented afterwards and mended our ways, and we've talked about this a lot, that Allah is forgiving, ghafoor, and most merciful. And then we see that Noah, subhanAllah, he's telling his people, ask for forgiveness from your Lord. If you do this act of asking for forgiveness, right, you're going to find that he is ever forgiving ghaffar, right, subhanAllah. And then Allah wa ta'ala reminds us that he is al-ghafur more than 90 times in the Qur'an, okay, so he says, ghafir dham he uses once in the Qur'an, he says that he is ghafur more than 90 times in the Qur'an, and Ghafoor, she says, is the one who forgives over and over and over and over and over again. Right? This is one of the differences. Right? So it's just not he forgives you, but it's forgive perpetual forgiveness. Right? When you ask Allah al Ghafoor to forgive you, you're asking for perpetual forgiveness, Ya Allah, the one who forgives you over and over and over and over again. Right? SubhanAllah. And here Allah tells us that he is Ghaffar. This name relates to intensity. Allah forgives the gravest of sins. Allah tells us that he has covered all bases, no matter how many sins or even the type of sin you have committed, that Allah will cover and protect you from them if you seek his forgiveness. So al Ghafur, for those who are writing the notes, the perpetual forgiveness that goes on, al Ghaffar. For those heavy sins, right, that you may have made, you're going to use this name to call on him. Ya Ghaffar. I've did this sin that's enormous, subhanAllah. Ya Ghaffar, forgive me. Right, subhanAllah. A sin that's continuous, Ya Ghafur, I've been sinning continuously doing this thing, have mercy on me and forgive me. Right, subhanAllah. So again, you see the nuances with these names and how to use these different names within these nuances, inshallah ta'ala. And then she brings a beautiful hadith that's found in Tirmidhi. And it's a hadith some of you may have heard before. O oh, son of Adam, so long as you call upon me and ask of me, I shall forgive you. Right? I shall forgive you for what you have done and I do not mind. As long as you call upon me and ask of me, I shall forgive you for what you have done, and I do not mind. O son of Adam, were your sins to reach the clouds of the sky, and were you then to ask forgiveness of me, I would forgive you. O son of Adam, if you were to come to me with sins nearly as great as the earth, and were then to face me, ascribing no partners to me, I would bring to you forgiveness as great as that which you have brought to me. SubhanAllah. Meaning as great as the sins that you have brought to me, Allah will meet you with the same amount or even more of forgiveness. SubhanAllah. Showing that SubhanAllah, there is no limit to the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because of that, we all know the man who killed 99 people, SubhanAllah. And Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala forgave him. Right? SubhanAllah. Because he sincerely was seeking for truth on how to find the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So we see that, mashallah, Allah is telling us to call upon him, to ask of him, inshallah ta'ala, and that he's going to forgive our sins, and he doesn't mind to do so. It doesn't matter if our sins reach the heavens, the earth. It doesn't matter if our sins fill the earth, a whole bag full of the earth, full of sins, that he will meet us with equal or more of its time, meaning of forgiveness, so that inshallah ta'ala, you and I can be successful. And then he, she reminds us in this verse 1410, where Allah says in the Quran, the messenger said, can there be doubt about Allah, creator of the heavens and earth? He invites you that he may forgive you of your sins and he delays your death for a, specific, for a specified time. Okay, so again, just that reiteration of Allah wa ta'ala in the Qur'an of the same thing. And also on the Day of Judgment, when our books of deeds are opened, that Allah will ask us, do you know this sin? 
Do you remember when you did this sin, my slave? And we'll say yes. And you say, do you remember when you did this slave, this sin, my slave? And we'll say yes. Do you remember when you did this and you did that and you did this and you did that? And you're going to say yes, 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 yes. Until the point that you're going to feel as if subhanAllah, I'm doomed. Allah is pointing out every nook and cranny. He's pulled everything out that I've done and he's called me to witness it and acknowledge it. I felt. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala will say to the person, I covered your sins during your life and today I will forgive them for you. SubhanAllah. And then they will be given their book in their right hand, meaning they have succeeded. I've covered your sins in the life of this world, and today I have forgiven them for you. And this is important, beloved brothers and sisters. Why is it important? Because in many instances, Allah, He covers our sins, subhanAllah, but we expose our sins. We expose our sins on social media. We expose our sins in different places, subhanAllah. And Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has been trying to hide them for you. So we should never expose those things that we ourselves do that is not correct, right? SubhanAllah. And that at an even higher level, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only does He cover those sins up for you in this world so that nobody can see them, but that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will replace the bad actions with good. As Allah says in the Quran, except for those who repent, those who repent, those who believe, and do righteous deeds, for them Allah will replace their evil with good deeds, and ever is Allah forgiving, merciful. Chapter 25, verse 70. SubhanAllah. Those who repent, those who believe, those who work righteous good deeds, Allah, you bet the Lucy right? He changes their bad deeds to good deeds. Allah Akbar. Right? Beautiful. That because, mashallah, you have done these things, not only has he covered them, but now he has exchanged them for what is good instead of leaving on your scale what is bad. Subhanallah. May Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala forgive us and have mercy upon us. One of the things that she talks to us about, and she talked about it in the last class as well, is being aware, being self-conscious. And there's a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet ﷺ said, all of my nation will be forgiven except those who sin openly and or publicize their sins. Okay, all of my nation will be forgiven except, here goes the clause, okay, highlighted, big letters, bold, right, mashallah, except those who who sin openly and publicize it. It is a part of sinning openly when a man does something at night, then the following morning when Allah has concealed it for him, that he goes and he says to someone, bro, I did such and such last night, you won't believe it. Sister, I did such and such last night, you ain't gonna believe it, right? SubhanAllah. Allah covered it all night. And then in the morning the slave comes and exposes it to their friends and the like. And subhanAllah, they have uncovered what Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has concealed. And may Allah protect us from ever being among those who uncover what Allah conceals. And may Allah keep us from being among those who sin with ease. Ameen. The benefits of seeking forgiveness. So she gives us a verse that's well known, chapter 71, verses 10 through 12. And in this verse, there are five benefits, okay? Five benefits for the person who seeks forgiveness. Okay, so here's where we begin again taking the nuances of 
how to benefit from this, okay? We just don't want to learn, okay, we're forgiven, good, alhamdulillah, I'm going to go seek forgiveness, khalas. There's benefits, right? So here, Nuh again, he says, ask for forgiveness of your Lord. Indeed, Allah is the perpetual forgiver. He is the one, ghafiru dhamb, the one who, mashallah, tabarak wa ta'ala, he forgives, mashallah, perpetually. He says, and one, he will send you rain from the sky upon you in continuing showers. And when we look at Islam and we look at Islamic history, we have, right, what's called the dua of istisqa, right? We have this, this dua of when there is drought and rain is not falling, right? SubhanAllah, that the believers would go out and they would raise their hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them. We talked about, right, when Musa alayhi salatu was salam in the past, when Musa was in a drought and there was a sinner among them and Allah wasn't sending the rain because of the sinner. We talked about this story for those who were here. For those who never heard the story, right, briefly, then Musa went up to Allah. He told him, I'm not sending you rain because of the sinner. Tell him to leave. Musa goes, he talks to his community. The sinner says, if I leave, I'm going to die. If I expose myself, I'm going to be exposing my sins and people are going to abandon you, right? So he seeks Allah's forgiveness and when he seeks Allah's forgiveness, what happens? It begins to rain. MashaAllah. Musa goes back, he says, Ya Allah, why did you send the rain? He says, the same reason I held it, it's the reason I sent it. The sinner repented, right? SubhanAllah. And then Musa says, show him to me. And Allah does what? Allah says, yeah, Musa, why should I show him to you when I've hidden him from you for the last, right, 40 years? Allahu Akbar. Right? Subhanallah. So again, Allah covering the slave, but when the slave turns to Allah, they get the benefit of what it is that they're seeking. They get the rain. Second, that he will give you an increase in wealth. Right? For those of us, subhanallah, who are seeking to be increased in wealth, we're going through a difficulty financially, you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in istighfar, Right, seeking his forgiveness, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al razzaq we took the name already, right? The one who's the sustainer, the provider, he inshallah ta'ala will send down the rizq, right? The provisions that you need so that you can live your life. Number three, that because of you turning to Allah in istighfar, he will give you children. Right? For those who are looking to have children, maybe the wife is barren, subhanAllah, they have an issue, I don't know, they have to use in vitro, whatever. It may be that subhanAllah, through istighfar, that that, mashallah, that desire of what you wanted, mashallah, and that dua is finally accepted and Allah gives you and blesses you with children. Number four, he'll provide you with gardens. And number five, he'll provide you with rivers, right? SubhanAllah. So you have these five things that you can gain through forgiveness, right? SubhanAllah. Again, number one, Allah Taala will send rain from the sky. Number two, He will increase you in wealth. Number three, He will increase you in children, gardens, mashallah, and rivers just from asking Him for forgiveness, right? And many instances, in many instances, we believe it's us that has to go out and work so hard to get these things, right? That's part of the process. But the most important part is turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in forgiveness, inshallah ta'ala. The second benefit, inshallah ta'ala, the second benefit is that our hearts are polished when we seek forgiveness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she gives us the hadith in Tirmidhi that when a slave commits a, a sin, black spots appear upon the heart as Allah says, Right, that these black spots have taken over the heart, right, subhanAllah. But when the person seeks forgiveness, the black spots and they repent, the black spots begin to be cleansed, erased, right, subhanAllah. So here we see that when we are being taken over, our heart is being taken over, that one of the ways to polish and to cleanse that heart is through seeking Allah's forgiveness. The third benefit or the third series of benefits that she brings in terms of what we get for seeking forgiveness is a hadith found in Abu Dawood that Allah opens the door to relieve hardship in general, right? As the Prophet ﷺ said, the one who regularly seeks forgiveness, this person who is regularly seeking forgiveness, istighfar, 
Allah will relieve him from every burden and make every discomfort for them, uh, uh, make from every discomfort an outlet, a way out, and he will provide for him from sources he can never ever imagine. Right? So <coughs> that difficulty, mashallah, Allah is removing it by means of istighfar, right? Subhanallah. And even, right, again, and we can add another benefit, right? Again, a story that I've told you guys before, and may Allah. And even, right, again, and we can add another benefit, right? Again, a story that I've told you guys before, and may Allah. And even, right, again, and we can add another benefit, right? Again, a story that I've told you guys before, and may Allah. And even, right, again, and we can add another benefit, right? Again, a story that I've told you guys before, and may For those who ask him, how long have you done that? And has any of your du'as never been answered? And he says, all of my du'as have been answered except one. I had a desire to meet Ahmed ibn Hanbal. And he's Ahmed ibn Hanbal. He says to him, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala drug Ahmed ibn Hanbal by his feet to your doorstep. Subhanallah. Why? Because of? Istighfar and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala In terms of living with the names We're coming towards the end She says again We mentioned before Be aware Reflect on your state Right She says we, may, she, we might all battle With bad or unsavory thoughts But the most important thing Is that we do not act upon them Indeed we are rewarded For the act of resisting Acting upon those thoughts Excuse me so again, we remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mashallah, He does not hold us accountable for our thoughts, right? The companions, they came to the Prophet and they said, Ya, O Messenger Allah, we have these thoughts that are horrible. And the Prophet He told them, as long as you do not speak of them, and as long as you do not act upon them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to hold you accountable for those thoughts and for those actions, right? So again, alhamdulillah, it's normal that sometimes things come into our mind that are inappropriate, alhamdulillah, but as long as we don't act and we don't do, alhamdulillah, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will not hold us accountable for those things. But we have to hold ourselves accountable to make sure we don't act and we don't do, right? And because we're, we're human beings, mashallah, and we're adults, sometimes a man or a woman, what it may be, Maybe you're walking down the street and you see a, a, a man who, mashallah, he's handsome and you see a woman who you think she's fine and the thought comes to your mind. And shaitan says, man, you should say something, right? Astaghfirullah, right? Or, subhanallah, you took that look, the Prophet said the first is for you, the second is against you, right? You get to look once. Doesn't mean you look on purpose, right? But he'll give you the one look. But it's not the look and then you kind of just stay and stare, right? Astaghfirullah, right? Subhanallah. You right away you course correct the state of your mind in that instance, right? And because we're human beings, this happens to everybody. And I and I'll tell you a funny story, subhanAllah, just to show how sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He <laughs> He wants to prove to us that subhanAllah sometimes what we think isn't true. And I don't know if I've told the story before, but many years ago, maybe 20 years ago, we were in the masjid. And a few brothers and our wives were together. And all of a sudden our wives call us and they said they were getting on the bus coming to the masjid. And that some guys said something to them nasty. So we're trying to figure out, okay, where are you at? We're coming down there. Did they jump on the bus with you guys? What's happening? You know what I mean? We're jumping in the car now. So I remember jumping in the car. We, we jumped in the car. It's about four or five of us. And we're like, once we get there, we got to ask the sisters what these men look like so that we can identify them inshallah ta'ala and find them and see what's going on and one brother says man that's going to be hard brother because my wife don't look at no men <laughs> right he's like my wife no she doesn't ever look at men so it's going to be hard so we got there and we like sisters inshallah can you describe the guys and the first one that gave us the best description was his wife <laughs> She was like, yeah, blue jeans on, red shirt. He looked like this, he looked like that. And we looked at him and we just like all started cracking up, right? SubhanAllah, because of the statement he made, my wife never looks at a man, right? 
This is dreamland, right? This is dreamland. We are men, we're women, subhanAllah. And unfortunately, sometimes we fall short of the mark and we look at the opposite gender. This is reality, right? And because we're dealing in reality, we have to learn how to fix those realities, right? SubhanAllah. So we make istighfar, we don't act, we don't do, right? SubhanAllah. And we don't move forward on those thoughts that we have in our mind, inshaAllah ta'ala. Um, living with the names number two, ask for forgiveness in abundance, right? SubhanAllah. There's a beautiful dua, and I'm going to ask, because I know we've gone over this dua before. There's a dua that the Prophet ﷺ made, and I'm going to ask to see if anyone knows what this dua is or what it's called. And he says, whoever makes this dua during the day with firm faith in it and dies on that same day, or it makes it in the morning and dies on that same day before the evening, he will be from the people of paradise. Whoever recites it at night and dies before the morning, he will be from the people or she will be from the people of paradise. Does anyone know what dua this is? And it has a special name. It has a special name, a title to this dua that we've been taught. And I know we've covered it in the past for those who have been, mashallah, with us for some time now, inshallah ta'ala. Not our new students, inshallah. Inshallah ta'ala. Not our new students, inshallah. But the kursi is a good one as well that we say every day after the salah and it is a protection for us mashallah I know the name I know the the but not the name what's what's the dua Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa ant khalaqtani wa ana ala wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika ma istata'tu this is the dua. The dua has been titled as Sayyidul Istighfar. Sayyidul Istighfar. This is what the title has been given to this dua. The master of all supplications. Right? Allahu Akbar. The master of all supplications. And the sister recited it for us in Arabic, mashallah. The English translation, Oh Allah, you are my Lord. Anta Rabbi. La ilaha illa ant. There is no God worthy of worship except you. Khalaqatani wa na abdu. You've created me and I am your slave. And I am faithful to my covenant and my promise as much as I can. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told us to do things as much as you can. Right? So I've made a covenant with you, Ya Allah. I've made a promise with you, Ya Allah. I'm trying to hold on to that the best that I can. I seek refuge with you, Ya Allah, from all the evil that I have done. So we see here, this is confessing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? I'm confessing to you, Allah, all of my evil. I'm seeking refuge with you in terms of all of the evil I've done. We don't go ask from a man. We don't go ask from a saint. We don't go ask from angels. We turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the forgiver of sin, right? SubhanAllah. I acknowledge before you, Ya Allah, all the blessings that you have bestowed upon me, even though I'm a sinner, right? SubhanAllah, and continue to sin. And I confess to you all my sins, right? I'm open with you, Ya Allah, about all of the sins I commit. And why not be open with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not know your sins? Does he not know what you did today and yesterday and what, he's going, what you're going to do tomorrow? Absolutely. So there's no need for you to hide your sins from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no need to put them away or tuck them away. You can say, Ya Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, I've done kadha wa kadha wa kadha wa kadha wa kadha wa kadha, Ya Allah. And you know it better than I. Faghfir li ya Rabb. Forgive me, my Lord. Right? SubhanAllah. Sincerely turning to Allah, crying with tears in your eyes, inshallah ta'ala. MashaAllah, with your voice stuttering and shaking, right? SubhanAllah, because you understand that Allah knows the intricacies of the heavens and the earth and everything that you have done in your life. Nothing is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And 
the end of the du'a. So I inter- so I turn to- so I entreat you to forgive my sins. I turn to you, Ya Allah, to forgive my sins. For nobody can forgive sins except you, Ya Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. So the this du'a, mashallah, for those of you who have not rem- memorized it. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa ant khalaqtani wa ana abduka wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika ma istata'tu right abu'u laka bi ni'matika laya wa bu'u bi dhanbi faghfir li fa innahu la yaghfiru dhunuba illa ant right subhanallah this dua you want to memorize this dua inshallah ta'ala why because it is called sayyidul istighfar the master of all supplications and if you guys remind me inshallah ta'ala in our whatsapp chat i'll go ahead and i'll put Masha'Allah, alhamdulillah, Jazakallah khair, Sister Khadija, she says, is in the fortress of the Muslim, 99 through 100. I'll also put a small booklet that Shaykh Abdul Razak al-Badr, he wrote just on this dua. I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll tag that into the group. If you guys remind me later on, I'll tag you into the group. It's a small booklet, 30, 40 pages, inshallah ta'ala, breaking this dua down, right? Sentence by sentence, inshallah ta'ala, and how heavy this dua is, alhamdulillah. And inshallah ta'ala, we can also find the Arabic for you and inshallah ta'ala, we can uh, put that in there as well so that you can focus on trying to learn it. And anyone who needs to, mashallah, get checked, just send me a private message to Imam. I need to check my pronunciation of this dua. Send me a voice note and inshallah ta'ala, I'll check it for you so that inshallah ta'ala, I get a reward for helping you, mashallah, to learn the dua and perfect it. And mashallah, you get to say it in your life. And again, whoever says this in the morning or in the evening and dies before reaching any of those two states, paradise. That in itself should be your motivator today. That you're going to go and learn this dua, and in the morning during Fajr, while you're in sajda, you're going to make this dua. At night, and Isha, when you're in sajda, you're going to make this dua, inshallah ta'ala. Why? Because if you pass away, you want paradise, right? This is the goal, the ghaya for you, inshallah ta'ala, right? Masha'Allah. Um... And she says the supplication is also so powerful because it is an admission of our faults in the face of all the blessings we have been given, as well as an expression of hope because we truly know that Allah forgives and that He is the only one who forgives in such a way, right? SubhanAllah. And then she gives us another verse, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Allah describes the righteous who are rewarded with paradise with these characteristics, right? So again, we want to put in bold, right? Highlight it, mashallah, it's popping and flashing out at you. Allah has given paradise, right, to the righteous who have these traits, right? So here are the traits, inshallah ta'ala. We have seven, okay, seven traits that will get you paradise. Number one, those who say, our Lord, we believe, okay? We say, our Lord, we believe. Two, they say, so forgive our sins and protect us. From the suffering in the punishment of the fire. Forgive our sins and protect us from suffering in the punishment of fire. Number three, those who are steadfast in their iman, in their Islam. Number four, those who are truthful. Number five, those who are devout. Number six, those who give in Allah's cause, meaning charity. And number seven, those who pray before dawn asking for forgiveness. Right? So these seven things that when the righteous do these seven things, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will reward them with paradise. Our Lord, we believe, right? Forgive us our sins, protect us from the suffering of the fire, be steadfast, be truthful, be devout, be charitable, and before the dawn prayer, ask for forgiveness once again, inshallah ta'ala, and Allah will make you from among those Inshallah, who will enter paradise. The third way to live with this name is to always present good deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she mentions that part of seeking forgiveness is to try to make up for the bad deeds with good, right? Allah tells us this in the Quran, right? He goes back and he tells us that good deeds erase bad deeds, right? So if you did a bad deed today, go out and do double the good deeds, so that you can erase your bad deeds and outweigh your bad deeds, inshallah ta'ala. And there's nothing wrong with you doing that, alhamdulillah, because we all going to make mistakes. So alhamdulillah, I made a mistake. You know what? What is equivalent or even more to the mistake I made that I can do in good 
so that Allah can erase that off of my skull, inshaAllah ta'ala. And chapter 11, 114 is the verse, Indeed, good deeds do away with misdeeds, and that is a reminder for those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? The number four, being gatherings where the remembrance of Allah is always being mentioned, right? And we ask Allah that this here is from among those gatherings, where we are mentioning the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly and consistently, learning together how to move forward with these things, right? Not just being inspired, if you're inspired because of what's being presented from the book and the words that are being given to you, but more importantly, that we are learning how to live life and implement these different things in life, inshallah ta'ala, okay? So that when we come and we're in these gatherings, we already know that, mashallah, the angels, they go around and they look for the gatherings where Allah's name is being mentioned. They envelop that gathering with their wings, mashallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. The mercy of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala comes down. The angels build up one above another. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have forgiven the people in that gathering. May Allah make this gathering, the gathering where Allah says, I have forgiven all of these 45 individuals, brothers and sisters in this gathering. Ameen, Ya Rab. Ameen. 46, I include myself. 46, right? Alhamdulillah. And the angels, subhanAllah, say to Allah, Ya Allah, there's somebody in the gathering among those 46 who didn't come to seek forgiveness. And Allah says, I have forgiven them as well. No one will be excluded from my forgiveness, right? SubhanAllah, Allahu Akbar. And may we never be excluded from the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this beautiful hadith is found in Bukhari, inshallah ta'ala. And what I'll try to do again is like what we've done in the past. I tried to put together a small little presentation with these points, inshallah ta'ala. And I put them in the, in, the, in, the, in the group chat, hopefully within the next day or so. The last one that we're going to take tonight, forgive others if you want Allah to forgive you. And we've talked about this as well many, many times. Again, things that just continue to overlap. Why? Because Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala wants us to learn the lessons and implement the lessons in our life. Okay? Not just because we've ran out of things to say, subhanAllah, because Allah wants us to learn the things and implement these things in our life. Okay? And reminds us again of the story of Abu Bakr. Mistah said that, spoke ill words about his daughter Aisha radiallahu anha. Abu Bakr said, I'll never give him charity ever again. I was the one taking care of him. He'll never get money from me ever again. And Allah wa ta'ala says, and revealed the verse, they should forgive and forbear. Abu Bakr, you should forgive and forbear. Do you not love that Allah forgives you? And Allah is all forgiving and merciful. So part of receiving the mercy and the forgiveness from Allah is that we also have to be people who are forgiving and merciful. Because there is no crime greater than the crimes that we commit against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi. Right? SubhanAllah. There's no crimes greater than that. Because if we look at what we do, some of us may say, well, I, I, don't, I don't do anything major, Imam. I don't... I don't know, fornication, there's no infidelity, right? There's no murder, there's no killing, there's no drugs, there's no, right? No major sin. But then we ask, right? When we took last week, we said Adam was thrown out of paradise. Why? Who can give me the response? Why was Adam thrown out of paradise? Pooja, go ahead. Um, because he disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How? How, Pooja? Um, I mean, Allah forbid him, for, forbade him to not go close to that tree, but he uh, did go, I mean, the ate from the forbidden tree, and that was disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. So, was eating from the tree a big thing? Right? Many may say, no, it's just a tree. It was just an apple. It was a fruit. Whatever it was that they ate, right? SubhanAllah. What's the big deal? The big deal wasn't that he ate the fruit, right? The big deal was, as Pooja said, that he disobeyed him and Eve, disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Correct, Umnila, right? They disregarded the principle 
that Allah has set there and they disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we look at our lives and we see how many principles that how many things Allah has told us to do in our lives and we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether we think they're little or not. It wasn't a major sin. Adam didn't kill anybody. Adam didn't commit fornication. Adam didn't steal. He didn't hurt. He ate a piece of fruit, right? But it isn't the fruit. It's that Allah told him, don't go near the tree. And because of that, he disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by going near the tree. And for anyone who's a parent, you should understand this so clear. That when your children and you tell your children, don't do X, Y, and Z, and they do it, it's huge. It's a big thing, right? SubhanAllah. You know, you have disrespected and disregarded what I have told you, right? And you may lose it because of that. SubhanAllah. Allah doesn't lose it. Alhamdulillah. Allah taught Adam some words of repentance, right? So as well... We need to teach our children that they can also ask for forgiveness and we can forgive them, right? We shouldn't just leave it in the air that way either. SubhanAllah, may Allah forgive us if we have ever done that. I mean, right? But in the same token, we have to acknowledge that disobeying Allah is major. It's major. And because it's major, SubhanAllah, that we do this so often with Allah and it's a major sin, then what about what people do with us that's not that bad? And Allah is telling us, forgive them, right? SubhanAllah, because you would love for Allah to forgive you. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. And may Allah allow us to be people who have big hearts, big souls, that we can in turn learn to forgive others as well. And when we learn to forgive others, you will feel, you will feel how relieved you will be by removing that weight that has been burdening you for so long, right? SubhanAllah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, help us. I mean, so it's called Sayyidul Istighfar Shakur. Sayyidul Istighfar, um, the master of supplications. The master of supplications. Sayyidul Istighfar, if you got uh, the Hisnul Muslim, uh, Sister Khadija said is uh, the fortress of the Muslim it is on page 99 and 100 of the fortress of the Muslim inshallah ta'ala so you can find it there inshallah Khair. so I'm going to stop there inshallah ta'ala we'll open up the floor for any questions any reflections any comments inshallah and as always for those who are new you can uh, either use the chat you can send it publicly privately um, and or you can raise your hand and I can uh, you can unmute, unmute yourself and use uh, the microphone as well inshallah may Allah have mercy on us Amen. and yes forgiveness Iris is uh, mashallah a cleansing for our hearts for sure forgiveness is a cleansing from our hearts for sure No worries for being late. It's okay. Alhamdulillah. You had Arabic class beforehand. It's all good. Mashallah. No worries. Allah bless you. Alhamdulillah. There, the class is being recorded. So whatever you missed in the beginning, inshallah ta'ala, it'll be inside of the group and you can go back and watch the beginning, inshallah. No worries. It's like on a car run. Well, yeah. It was really pressing me. No, no worries at all. And I was pressing her. <laughs> <laughs> mashallah. Uh, Samantha, I see you have your hand up. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Um, what is the name of the book you're using? So the name of the book is Reflecting on the Names of Allah by Sister Jinan Yusuf. Reflecting on the Names of Allah by Sister Jinan Yusuf. There is a PDF copy. You just have to watch. There's two copies. There's one copy. is a PDF copy. It's like 200 pages. Uh, that's the shorter version. And then there's a longer version of 500 plus some pages, inshallah ta'ala. And then it's, that's the complete version of the book. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, there's a private question here. You found it. Good job. Okay, mashallah. Allah bless you, Akhi. Mashallah. Uh, Ukhti, I'm not sure if it's a brother or sister because I'm looking at the last name. Um, there's a private question here. It says, does Allah sometimes choose to punish us for something we have already repented from? So, subhanAllah, uh, one of the things that 
we have to look at is that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala doesn't want to punish us, right? Uh, I think uh, we, we mistaken that uh, Allah wants to punish us. That Allah says, okay, you've been like this, so I'm just going to punish us, punish you. The reality is that it's not punishment from Allah where it is more so a cause or an effect. It's an effect because of what we ourselves have done. What do I mean? Perhaps I did something in the past, right, subhanAllah, and I've repented from that thing in the past, but now something in my present, subhanAllah, just falls out of balance. It may be connected to what I've done in the past, subhanAllah, and maybe it's not connected by the, being the same thing, right, or something that comes or stems from that thing, but it all kind of still bridges back to that moment, right? All right? So it is the effect based on what I've done, right, subhanAllah. So it's not Allah just saying, khalas, I'm going to punish you because you've done this. Allah is not one to punish. We don't think about Allah that way. It is not from His names. It is not from His attributes to be angry. It is not from His names to be the punisher. He doesn't have these types of names, mashallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. He only has beautiful names, mashallah, um, and beautiful traits. Will Allah punish people on the day of judgment? Will Allah punish people and torment them in the grave? Will Allah right, allow people to go through certain punishments in this life? Absolutely, absolutely. But all of that is because of what their own hands have put forward and not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the punisher or the one who wants to go now and inflict punishment upon his creation, right? SubhanAllah. But there may be connection there from the sin and now this is a result of that inshallah ta'ala and be repented alhamdulillah Allah may have forgiven it but it doesn't mean that subhanallah you're not going to have a tough time afterwards why because if we go back to the story of Adam right subhanallah Adam was in paradise he repented Allah taught him the words Allah says he accepted his repentance but then Allah sent him to the earth to toil right you couldn't obey me here so now you can't enjoy this no longer you're going to go to the earth and you have to earn your way back Right, you have to earn your way back. Right, Subhanallah. It's almost like being imprisoned. Right, Subhanallah. And what does what does the what does the Prophet say about the earth? Sijinul mu'min wa jannatul kafir. Right, that the earth is a prison for the believer, and it is a paradise for the disbeliever. Right, the believer feels like he's in prison in this earth. Subhanallah. Right, Subhanallah. So we see that like, just kind of making similitudes and kind of bringing it uh, around a circle. Inshallah, Taala. Uh, yes, we will be sharing the class. Inshallah, Taala, in the group. Uh, the WhatsApp group that we have for the class. Uh, Salam, can you please link the other big okay regarding the Sayyid the Stikfar? Yes, we will link the dua inshallah as well. Yes, inshallah, we'll put it in the, in the class chat inshallah. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How do we grieve the special brother Marcel's Williams? Uh, I have been emotional and down about his death. I know he had a beautiful ending, but it hurts, especially being a black woman. So alhamdulillah, um, you know, one of the most beautiful things is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places signs on the earth for us, right? Allah places signs on the earth for us so that we can learn from those lessons, subhanAllah. And I don't grieve for my brother Mar Marcel Williams, Marcellus Williams, right? But I celebrate him. Why? Because the way he exited this world, many have not exited it that way. I can only ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that on my last moment, in my last day, subhanAllah, many people don't, don't get to know when that's going to happen, right, subhanAllah. And when people know that they're going to die, whether it's of a sickness, whether it's like him, you know, being given the death penalty, whatever it may be, subhanAllah, that we see that subhanAllah rabbil adeem, People don't know how to cope in those instances. Oh my God, I'm going to die. What am I going to do, right? SubhanAllah, anxiety goes up, stress goes up. SubhanAllah, when you watch the interview by our beloved brother, Allah, yarhamuhu, Allah have mercy on his soul. Allah grant him jannah to Firdaus al-Ada. Allah grant him forgiveness. May Allah accept him as a shaheed. So he enters paradise without any questioning whatsoever. I mean, you see how relaxed he was. And he says, SubhanAllah, if this is what Allah decreed for me, then khalas, I'm happy. He says, I make the dua that the Prophet ﷺ made and taught us. He says that the dua where the Prophet ﷺ taught us saying, if death is good for me, ya Allah, then 
let take me, ya Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Right? But if death is not good for me, then let me live, right? As long as possible until death is better for me. Right? SubhanAllah. This is dua made by the Prophet wasallam, And then he says, I was making this dua. Right? So we're confident that this is what Allah wanted for him. Right? And then that he writes the last statement saying, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Right? All praise and thanks belongs to Allah in every condition and every state. You didn't hear him saying, SubhanAllah, I'm innocent, I have proof. Nobody wants to listen to it. You know what I mean? SubhanAllah, Allah, how? Why is this happening to me? La. He says, I'm comfortable. I've turned it over. We talked about this, right? He gave it all to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most important moment. That for me is a hero. That for me is an example. That for me is Allah showing us belief. MashaAllah. Just like we are seeing it from Palestine. MashaAllah. Here we have another, MashaAllah, human example of what belief looks like in the most difficult of moments when you know your clock is ticking down and not because you're sick, but because they are going to kill you. And he gives it to Allah. He leaves with confidence. He leaves with iman. He leaves trust with trust, with, 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 with reliance. He leaves with all of those characteristics you mentioned. It's right, saying his Lord is Allah, believing, asking for forgiveness, being devout, right? SubhanAllah, persevering, Allahu Akbar, right? He left with all of those characteristics and Allah said about the person who has those characteristics, paradise will be for those believers, Allahu Akbar. So it brings me joy that our brother has left the earth in that, in that way. It saddens me that the system is broken and the system is corrupt and that we still have to stay behind and fight that system. And this is what we should be doing now, inshallah ta'ala, in terms of advocacy work, right? But alhamdulillah, my heart is at peace that I saw what iman and faith really looks like, mashallah, right? Sister Fatima, you got your hand up. Uh, yes, regarding what the sister said, um, and it also relates to your answer, um, I also see that we are tools in um, Allah's earth. Mm. And so if he's al Malikul Mulk, the king of the kingdom, then every single thing in his kingdom is under his control and it has a use, a purpose for something that he's trying to achieve. Absolutely. So if we see things that way, then that brother might be um, a tool, has a use for Allah to achieve a plan that Allah has. So that's how it also goes back to all oh, praises to Allah. Everything is about Allah. Mashallah. And so that statement, subhanAllah, um, I saw so many posts and it was posts that only had the statement. And now I thought to myself, how many people are going to read this mm. and go and search Allah? How Allah many people Allah. are going to see this and try to understand uh, what it means, how many people are going to have uh, like something that makes them witness Islam. Allah. And he is a tool for that. So yes. we, don't, we don't know how many people Allah uh, wanted to get to Islam through him. And he was a sabab for that. And that was always part of Allah's plan, maybe. So it's the same with what's happening in Palestine, how many people are learning about the team. So that's just how I'm seeing things. Mashallah, mashallah, beautiful, beautiful addition, Sister Fatima. Mashallah, may Allah accept and reward you for that beautiful addition. Mashallah. Um, how do we know when we are being forgiven by others? So the only way we know that we are being forgiven by others is if, when we ask others to forgive us, that they actually tell us, "I've forgiven you." Right? Subhanallah. But I wouldn't be too concerned with hearing those words from the other person because sometimes we can get caught. And I need to hear those words. I need to hear the words, I'm forgiven. La, you don't have to hear them, inshallah ta'ala. Ask for forgiveness and give that person time. Give them space so that inshallah ta'ala, perhaps they can forgive you. Maybe they'll come back later and they'll say, I've forgiven you. I've erased it. Maybe they've forgiven you, but they still need their space and their time. You know, and they can't be around uh, that person that they're forgiving just yet, right? And that's okay, right? That's okay, alhamdulillah. It is just for us to do our part, inshallah ta'ala. And then if we're from those who are forgiving, 
then naturally it's nice for us to say it. Listen, I've forgiven you. Alhamdulillah. Why? Because I want Allah to forgive me as well. And this is one of the reasons that I have forgiven you, right? SubhanAllah. Right? So just really confirming and acknowledging that belief upon your tongue as well, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, yes, yes, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to put the lecture in the, in the WhatsApp chat, inshallah, and you'll be able to watch it there. Give me, maybe by tomorrow, hopefully, uh, if it downloads, inshallah, um, I can get it up in, on YouTube by tomorrow and share with everyone. So the three names, inshallah ta'ala, Ghafir al is the first one, al Ghafur and Ghaffar. Ghafir al al Ghafur and Ghaffar. Okay, so they all sound relatively alike, inshallah ta'ala, with slight changes, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, Ghafir al al Ghafur, al Ghaffar. Okay, slight nuances in the, in the pronunciation, inshallah. Let's see, brother Paul just shared the PDF. Is this the, the, the full version, Paul? Okay, full version, good, mashallah. So you guys have the full version here, inshallah ta'ala of the book, uh, alhamdulillah. So again, alhamdulillah, you know, go back take those points, annotate them, but then again, we're going to create a little PowerPoint presentation from it, inshallah, and we're going to put it in the group, just so that you have that as well. You can download it onto your phone, mm -hmm. and it can just be, you know, bulleted, inshallah ta'ala, a little bit easier for you to remember, a little bit easier for you to put into practice, inshallah ta'ala, okay? What is my minhaj? <laughs> the minhaj question. What do I believe? Quran, Sunnah, ala fahm salaf salih. Alhamdulillah. Sunni. Okay, I don't see any question, other questions here. Other than just some comments online. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Khayr, let me see. We got one more here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Regarding the story you told us about Musa alayhi salam, if we are linked with another person in a situation and they have not yet made tawbah, can we ask Allah to forgive that person and that is enough for the rain uh, to pour down and to, for the hardships to dissolve or does the person have to make tawbah themselves? So here in this specific uh, story, it took for the person themselves to make tawbah for Allah to send down the rain. But it's not to say that you can't make tawbah, or you can't ask Allah to forgive that person, right? And ask Allah to forgive you as well, and everybody do, do the same, and Allah to send down the rain, right? One of the, one, of the, one of the things that we learn with these different stories is that Allah has placed them there as lessons for us, right? He's pointed them out as a lesson, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't made it a condition, right? So it wasn't a condition that, you know, Khalas, if you, there's a group of you and one of you is bad, you're all doomed, right? The one bad apple ruined the bunch, right? That's not necessarily true with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But could it be the case? Yes, it can happen. So we take multiple angles from the story. One angle is that we're a community, right? We're family, we're brotherhood, we're sisterhood. What you do affects me, right? What you do can affect me, inshallah ta'ala. What I do can affect you, right? So we should always be trying to invite each other to what is good, right? right? By the time all mankind is at loss, illa ladina amanu, except those who believe, right? Illa ladina amanu, wa amilu salihat, those who believe and do good deeds, watawasaw bil haq, and they invite each other to the truth, watawasaw bil sabr, and they invite one another to patience and perseverance, right? Alhamdulillah. So we want to be those individuals who are always inviting each other to that, inshallah ta'ala. But we should also always be making dua for our brothers and sisters. Because perhaps maybe our du'as will help them, mashallah, or be a gift for them that Allah accepts our du'as. And then Allah allows that person, mashallah, to turn to him or gives them the realization that they need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it doesn't mean that 
anytime you find yourself in that situation. And we, we wouldn't know if we're in that situation or not, right? SubhanAllah, because we don't know each other's intimate details of our sins and all those other things. But one of the lessons is that, yes, that can be the case. But as well, alhamdulillah, doesn't mean that we will jam ourselves up every time if this was the case, inshallah ta'ala. But we should be making dua for one another. Khair. All right, so inshallah, brothers and sisters, we're going to end there because I have a meeting uh, pretty soon after this, inshallah. Make dua for all of us, inshallah ta'ala. We will make dua for you as well. Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always keep you in his blessings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always forgive you. May Allah, mashallah, be perpetual in his forgiveness with you over and over and over again. May he make you and allow you to realize, allow us to realize those sins that we have to turn to and how to use his different names uh, and call upon him for those moments of shortcomings and sins. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erase all of our sins for us, right, mashallah, because there is al-afu, which is another name of Allah, which means that when you call upon Allah, inna ka'afun tuhibbu al-afu fa'afuani, you are the pardoner, or Allah pardon us, right? You love to pardon, pardon us. That is a complete erase. Erasing of sins. This is right. Al Ghafur is a complete covering of sins, inshallah ta'ala. So may Allah teach us how to use these different names in these different circumstances so that we can be covered, so that we can have them erased, so that we can do good and have them replaced with good uh, and replace our bad deeds with good deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be from those who take advantage of all of these gifts that Allah has given us because He wants us to succeed. Amin, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Subhanak Allah wa hamdik, nashadu wa la ilaha ila anta wa nastaghfiru ka wa natubu ilayk. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal asri inna l-insana lafi khusr. Illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasu bil-haqq wa tawasu bil-sabr. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Recording stopped. Wa alaykum.